صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد السلام عليكم Welcome to my journey to Islam. May God's peace and blessings be on all of our viewers. My name is Karen Shaw and I will be your host today. Um, and I have the pleasure of interviewing uh, a friend of mine. Her name is Sister Roraima Aisha Kanar. Welcome, Sister. Well, thank you, Assalamu Alaikum. And to all the viewers, uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm Thank you I'm, for inviting me. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy that we get the chance to talk today and share your story yeah, with you. our viewers. You want to go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm uh, born in Cuba uh, to parents, a uh, father from the Canary Islands and the mother from Spain background. Either They were both born in Cuba. Uh, we lived. I lived in Cuba till I was five, and mm -hmm. then we came to the United States. How we was that? Do you remember that trip? Oh boy, yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Uh, it was kind of exciting mm -hmm. for a five-year-old, um, except that they broke my toys, and that was something that I wasn't too happy about because they wanted to check to see if we had any money. The smuggling. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we had to come with limited mm -hmm. amount of things. But we were welcomed in this beautiful country of the United States. Oh, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah and um, part of my journey, of course, mm -hmm. of my life. And uh, we were very happy in Miami. We had a tough time, you mm -hmm. know, being able to survive for a while, but everything, God willing, came along and um, did you have any? Fine. Did you have any family or friends here when I you came? I had no family. No, no one. we were mm -hmm. a very li we're a big family, mm -hmm. but we weren't close together. Mm -hmm. We were basically father, mother, brother, and grandmother and myself. Okay. Uh, and we came here. Uh, my brother is 10 years older than myself, and w I, he wasn't really a close friend because we had too much age mm -hmm. difference. But it was, it was okay when yeah. we came here to the okay. United States. So what was your new childhood like in America? Well, we found a little bit of culture mm -hmm. difference. Uh, my father was very strict in our home. Mm -hmm. And here, the kids were more free to run around and do things on their own by themselves. So that right there was a little bit of a shock to me, and especially that I couldn't do what the other kids did. Mm. But that was okay. Mm -hmm. I respected my father and my mother very much, and mm -hmm. we did a lot of family things together, so we were, mm -hmm. we were fine. Did you have religion in your life as a child? Through my mother, yes. My mother was a very religious woman. Uh, very God-fearing. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that happened was through the will of God, mm -hmm. and uh, she was that spirituality she instilled in me, and I thank her every oh. day for it. Alhamdulillah. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I went to Catholic school for 12 years okay. until I graduated high school, mm -hmm. and it, some people say it's a terrible experience, but to me it was a wonderful experience. I had very good friends with the sisters. With the uh, nuns? Yeah, with, with the, the nuns. nuns. Uh -huh. uh, the religious people to me were always closer to me. Mm -hmm. I felt I could trust them and that I could, I don't know, I, I guess I felt they had more things in common with me than hmm. most other people. So did you always have faith yes. as a child? And oh, you, and I you, needed it you to needed survive. It. You had a connection yes. with God? It was, it was something that I couldn't live without. Okay. And it was very important in my life, and mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it in my life. Mm -hmm. Even through my teenage years, mm -hmm. it was important for me. Tell me, some, tell me a little bit more about the, uh, the nuns. What did, what, what did you like about them? Well, mm -hmm. I respected them for being so close to God mm -hmm. and, and um, being very caring. Mm -hmm. um, their dress, I loved the way they dressed and that they covered, and they had beautiful flowy uh -huh. fabrics. I guess that called my attention at some point. And they're wearing their, their and hijab, their, their hijabs right? yeah. that they were wearing. Right, right. Um, and also, um, they were very caring with people, mm -hmm. charitable, and mm -hmm. all of that was in me, and I, mm -hmm. I, I like to mm -hmm. share with them to do those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point in high school, I wanted to be a nun too, right when I was getting ready to graduate. You want? You thought about becoming a nun? I thought of nun. becoming a nun. And what happened? Why and didn't you? Well, I told my mother, mm -hmm. thinking that I was going to give her the biggest gift of my life, 
and it was a big shock for her because she said that she almost started crying mm -hmm. telling me that she wanted grandchildren and she wanted me to get married and have a wedding and I wasn't going to have it at that time. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I can't do this. And mm -hmm. I think at that moment I started questioning my religion okay. and really what being spiritual was versus the type of life that I needed to lead. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I said, well, maybe I'll be a missionary in Africa. Mm. And that also made her very upset. Uh, I guess she didn't want me away from home mm -hmm. or away from you know, being close to them. So then um, God sent me some people from Saudi Arabia and from uh, Syria that I met in the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. And through this relationship, I was able to you know, find Islam. I was given a Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, I read. They gave me a lot of different books. Um, and later on, I started having interaction with the family of uh, these two boys that I met in the university. Mm -hmm. They were boys. And, but to me, in my life, it was okay mm -hmm. to have friends that were boys. Mm -hmm. So um, God sent me their mom that was always coming in from overseas, even though she didn't speak English. Uh, she didn't know how to read or write, but she was the biggest blessing in my life for how me. Did, how did you communicate with her? With hand signals, mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess I learned a lot of words and um, eventually I learned a lot of Arabic during the almost 10 years that they were here. You're so lucky. Uh, I started traveling with the family, mm -hmm. uh, with the ladies of the mm -hmm. family, of course. Uh, whenever they went to Saudi Arabia, well, whenever they mm -hmm. were in Saudi Arabia, I'd visit them. I went to Syria, I went to Lebanon. I now went let to me ask you, were you Muslim already at this well, point? I in, when I first met mm -hmm. them, I wanted already to become Muslim because uh -huh. I found in Islam that Islam was a religion between God and myself and no one else had to judge me. Therefore, whatever I did, whatever I thought, mm -hmm. whatever I felt, mm -hmm. God knew what I was feeling and okay. thinking and that was very and important was that, to me. How was that different? How was Islam different from your Catholicism that you had practiced as a child? Well, in Catholicism, mm -hmm. I, I felt that I had to believe a lot of things mm -hmm. that I, had no logic to me. There was no explanation. I tried for at mm -hmm. least two years. When I first started studying mm -hmm. Islam, I, I tried for at least two years to go see priests, to, to get answers to many of my questions, mm -hmm. and they had Hardly Can you any. give us an example of some of those questions? Well, um, something like, wh why would I have to go confess to a human mm -hmm. when a human sins just like mm -hmm. myself? Mm -hmm. Why would he have the power to forgive mm -hmm. me? You know, mm -hmm. um, Jesus had power to forgive, but mm -hmm. he, he was a prophet. Mm -hmm. Or he was, in, when we were in Catholicism, to us he was God. Yeah. So of course he could forgive, but why a human? Mm -hmm. Who gave them a power? Mm -hmm. Um, also, you were supposed to uh, believe in the seven sorrows of Mary mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the Trinity. The Trinity. Which didn't, s there was no logic mm -hmm. behind the Trinity to me. Mm -hmm. You know, how could one person be the same as God, be the same as the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. And all these things were very, very intellectually challenging to me. I didn't, w I didn't want to have to believe you in had, this. Yeah, yes. you needed answers and they couldn't they had give no you answer. answers. They and, said, what, and just they would believe? get upset. No, mm -hmm. they would get upset Set and say, you? You're, are you a Catholic? <gasps> What's the matter with you? Why are you questioning? Yes, and then they told me that I would be excommunicated from the church if I decided to not believe in these things. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and that was a very powerful word for mm -hmm. Catholics. Sure, sure. Know. But then I figured that, you know, God is God mm -hmm. and he would love me for questioning. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a brain to, mm -hmm. to question. Mm -hmm. So I started to seek knowledge, you know, and God blessed me with a Quran, which had every answer to every question that I had. So there, there you found your yeah, answers. And there I found my answers. Aww. And then he put the right people in your yes. path yeah, to help you. Yeah, it was you. tough because the way of life that we had at mm -hmm. that time, uh, we felt it was very moral and mm -hmm. very religious and mm -hmm. very, because we went to church on Sunday uh -huh. and we gave charity to the church, not uh -huh. to the poor people, but to the church. Mm -hmm. um, and 
at that time we thought we were perfect mm -hmm. you know even though we wore low-cut dresses mm -hmm. and minis or shorter skirts mm -hmm. and nothing there was no limit to what we would do mm -hmm. even to the point that we, we could go to church without sleeves mm -hmm. And and I would a I even I would ask myself mm -hmm. how, if you're going to God's house, mm -hmm. how can you go uncovered? Mm -hmm. You know, how could you be so disrespectful when you wouldn't do it in front of your father, mm -hmm. maybe, or your uncles? Mm -hmm. So all these little things, I started questioning, and and I found the answers in Islam, and I felt comfortable that I wasn't the only one that was thinking this way. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. And you traveled, you said you traveled with this, this family yes. and their extended family. May Allah bless them all, mm -hmm. yes. I traveled with them um, everywhere, they because I worked with the airline in the accounting department, not mm -hmm. as a stewardess, mm -hmm. but um, I was able to have cheap trips, you know. Mm -hmm. So every time they were in a specific location, they would tell me, come on over and Aww. stay with us. And it was wonderful. They, they treated me like if I was family. Mm -hmm. And um, they taught me a lot. I saw their way of life, mm -hmm. and it was a way of life that was very similar to my home life, mm -hmm. you know. And and I felt that I was loved, sincerely loved mm -hmm. by them. Mm -hmm. And this helped me a lot in Islam. Um, it was also they taught me. They brought me back to having the haya that we we're born mm -hmm. with or the shyness mm -hmm. that we were born with. Because mm -hmm. we tend to lose that mm -hmm. uh, when we're not Muslim, mm -hmm. or even some Muslim can, can mm -hmm. lose it too. Mm -hmm. But when you start wanting to be in fashion mm -hmm. with the styles mm -hmm. of, of the uncovered women or the women that um, want to look provocative, because that's how they think that they look beautiful. Yeah. We tend to lose every value that we have. You know, we don't feel embarrassed anymore mm -hmm. to be half naked, or mm -hmm. we don't feel embarrassed to show all of our legs. And we don't reason, you know, that all mm -hmm. these things are things that God has given us and they're private mm -hmm. to us, mm -hmm. and we don't need to share with other people. Yeah, yeah I was raised that way too, so yeah. I, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and really, we they make us feel mm -hmm. that if we don't show it, mm -hmm. it means that we're embarrassed of it, mm -hmm. when it should be the opposite. That's right. That's it's right. It's our private privacy, mm -hmm. and and we don't need to show it to mm -hmm. anyone that we don't wish to, mm -hmm. or we should. Yeah. How was your um, now? Had you taken shahada yet? No, I didn't take shahada <coughs> for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, really. I hadn't even discussed the fact of having to take shahada. I just felt you, that were you I, praying? Were you? I was. I you started with Ramadan. Okay. Okay. And when I saw that God gave me the power to fast mm -hmm. when I loved food so mm -hmm. much, that was a total mystery to me that I was able to do it. So that that was got a sign me for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I started praying. And that was wonderful. I had to learn my prayers in mm -hmm. Arabic. Right. Um, so one of my friends, the son mm -hmm. of the lady mm -hmm. that I was telling you, he recorded oh. a little CD at uh -huh. that time. Uh -huh. uh, no, not a CD. A, a um, cassette. Cassette. Mm -hmm. Yes. At that Some time. Some of our viewers won't know what that what is. A cassette but is. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, know. from our time. <laughs> and that cassette, I had it in mm -hmm. my car, and I would play it over and over mm -hmm. till I learned my prayers. Oh. And I prayed. Al Fatiha mm -hmm. and and of course Kulhu Allahu mm -hmm. for at least seven or eight years before I learned any other surahs. Aww. But Allah knew my intention mm -hmm. and how I love to praise Him. So okay. it was easy for me. Now uh, when I went on one of my trips to Syria, uh, it was the day of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday. We got together with about a hundred women mm -hmm. in the house of a sheikha in, and I took my shahada oh. and to me I was always Muslim mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. but it was a special place because it was they were all so loving and caring oh, with me. Alhamdulillah. It was something that was well, so how special. How beautiful, how beautiful. You really got the support and, yes. and family and friends and, and, and a physical journey, not just a spiritual journey. Yes. But yes. you were taken physically to visit these these yes, wonderful places and see it for yourself. And it was something that I, I didn't, yourself and yeah, I didn't know that this was going to lead me mm -hmm. 
to Islam mm -hmm. that way. You know, I just thought they were friends and mm -hmm. they were we were going to have fun and they were just nice people that were different mm -hmm. and fun loving. Because at that age, in the twenties, you just want to have fun. Of course, you know that's course. all you think about. Oh, okay. Nothing else is important. Yeah. But right. it brought me to a whole way of life. A whole new way of a life. A new way of life. Oh, okay that brought me peace, interior peace, mm -hmm. and, and allowed me to be myself and be proud of who I was mm -hmm. and be proud of how I thought mm -hmm. and not be uh, ashamed to speak or, or just act good, good. of All who right. I was. All right. Before I wanted to be what society wanted me mm -hmm. to be. And now you now found I am yourself. Who I am. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to stop and take a break. Okay. All right. We're going to take a, a short break, and then we'll we will return. Thank you. Welcome back to my journey to Islam. Uh, my name is Karen Shaw, and I've been talking with Sister Roraima Aisha Kanar. Was that right? Yeah. Did perfect. I say it right? That's what wonderful. would you like me to call you? You can call me Aisha. Aisha. It's easier for Aisha. you. Aisha. Yes, okay. Thank you. Uh, before the break, you told us uh, how you finally officially committed to Islam, and you took Shahada in Syria, mm -hmm. right? With in a Syria. with a big group of of beautiful. supporting sisters mm -hmm. around you. Mm -hmm. oh, it was goodness. wonderful. It was such a beautiful experience. Aww. I felt like if all the weight on my shoulders had been lifted. Did, did, you, did you feel an immediate peace when, when you did that? Well, since I, you since know? I started reading and learning about mm -hmm. Islam, mm -hmm. I, I found an inner mm -hmm. peace because mm -hmm. I could be myself, you know, and that was the biggest thing. Before I used to be too um, focused on what people thought of me mm -hmm. uh, and not counting what God thought of me. Do you think that's the American that's the, culture? I think that's the American you know, culture kind of and, and all the most of the young girls suffer so much mm -hmm. with having to comply with what other people want them to look like or what they want them to and be. It, and it's an external. It's an external uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Many of them are not happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, and many of them think they're happy with it, but they don't sit down to analyze it because they're so wound up in the material things here. Yes, I agree. Instead I of agree. focusing on how beautiful they are inwardly mm -hmm. and trying to um, show it mm -hmm. outwardly mm -hmm. and, and be able to let people accept them for who they are. But and that that's takes a I lot of strength, though, and that takes knowing yourself, and that's not an easy process. You know, I, it's, I think uh, it, it comes also from your family. Mm -hmm. um, the loving yourself mm -hmm. is very important. It's, it's not a matter of becoming conceited or egoistic. No. It's a matter of knowing who you are, mm -hmm. the values that you have, that your parents have instilled in you, mm -hmm. and being proud of it, and not being afraid to speak and let everyone know that this is who you are. Mm. You never know who would really has that inside of them too, and maybe you'll bring it out That's it. in them, you know? So uh, it gave me a lot of self-confidence. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So what happened when you came back home? Did your family, your friends, how did they well, react? Well, my mom has <coughs> never been happy with me being Muslim. Uh, she thought that, you know, God, what was going to happen to me? I left my religion that I was mm -hmm. born with and I was baptized. And I said, Mom, baptism is just an act that it's just a ritual mm -hmm. that means nothing. Uh, if you don't change inside, if you don't believe in these things, it means nothing. You know, it's just water being poured on you. So mm -hmm. um, I told her I, I f the change in my life has been so great that you need to understand that this is very important to me. So she thought that I was just going to be Muslim for a little while. It was just well, a fad. Phase, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and I would come back. My friends would bet that I would be back pretty soon. How old being. were you at that time? <clears throat> well, at that time, I must have been maybe 25, Okay, around 25. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still did not wear hijab. Mm -hmm. uh, hijab was the last step that I took. but. I kept on learning more about Islam and, and changing my ways, you know, seeing mm -hmm. the beauty in it mm -hmm. and seeing the value that it gave me inwardly. So I changed and I changed, but my mother still wasn't happy. So one day I sat down with her and I asked her, Mom, you know, I respect you so much more. I love you so much mm -hmm. more. I, I, the obligation, before I never wanted to even be with you and Dad because, 
it wasn't cool to be with you. I wanted to be just with my friends. My responsibilities have changed in my life. The loves in my life have grown to be who they really should be. Don't you see this in me? Mm -hmm. She said, my daughter, but your body is so beautiful and you're not going to be able to wear a bathing suit oh, anymore no. or wear a low cut dress oh. that I used to make for you. And I said, mom, do you realize what you're telling me? that there's no value in the things hmm. that you're telling me. Or I was able to show my hair mm -hmm. or things like that. I said, these are things that are irrelevant in life. You know, all my life, I was conscious of what people wanted, you know, make sure that everybody would tell me how pretty I was. Mm -hmm. That's how I would get my high. Mm -hmm. But that isn't what life is all about, mm -hmm. you know. I learned that loving myself and, and being respectable to, to my family, respectful to mm -hmm. my family, um, was also very important in, in who I represented because I was representing them and mm -hmm. how people would see them. Mm -hmm. So she still didn't, she still didn't want it. Um, she wasn't happy with it. She thought that it kept on thinking that it was a fad until I married eventually after oh, tell us about that well I after 10 years of being Muslim um, I had a Cuban girlfriend that worked in the airlines not my, in the Eastern Airlines uh -huh. at that time I was working for another airline mm -hmm. and she thought that I was crazy because every time she would invite me to go to the movies or go to clubs mm -hmm. I would tell her no I couldn't mm -hmm. you know or she wanted to introduce someone to me I would say no I can't unless it's from a religious family or someone that would recommend me someone. Mm -hmm. So she said, you know what, come on over my house and have some coffee with my parents. I didn't even know she lived with her parents, oh. but she did. Mm -hmm. So we went to have coffee at her house and she had met a Turkish boy mm -hmm. um, that had been importing, she worked in cargo department and he imported things and she had saved him money. So when she saved him a thousand dollars, he was so happy he invited her to dinner to thank her. And she saw that he was too formal. He was very respectful. She was flirting with him and he wouldn't pay attention to her. So she calls me the next day and she says, you know what? I met a Sunni boy and this <laughs> boy is as weird as you are. <laughs> I'd like to introduce him to you. So I said, okay, let's, if it's in your parents' house, we'll mm -hmm. do it. So we went to have coffee at her house, Aww. and she introduced me to my husband, um, which uh, he wasn't very religious at the time. You know, he was wearing his little shorts from playing tennis, and here I am covered up to my feet with mm -hmm. my hijab. Mm -hmm. And it was a total opposites. We were total opposites. But I felt he was a kind man. Mm -hmm. I felt he would be a faithful husband. Mm -hmm. Just from that first wow. meeting, he was, a, he was such a sweet person. Mm -hmm. So um, we married three months after. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. His mother came from Turkey. He mm. went to ask for my hand with my dad, which my dad was in shock. Because, you know, in mm -hmm. the other culture, you just mm -hmm. fall in love and tell your parents who you're going to marry. Mm -hmm. So, Alhamdulillah, we've been married almost 28 years, oh. and we have three children. Three children. Yes. Thank oh, God. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So how do you, uh, how, how does your faith, you know, how in, in your family, you're with oh, raising it's, your it's children. Wonderful. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, with the faith, you realize the miracles of God that he mm -hmm. gives you, you know. You, you're more cautious, uh, conscious of um, a woman bearing a child, mm -hmm. how it comes about mm -hmm. in you, how you carry it. All these little things are more obvious to you now before you take it for granted. Do you feel more grateful? I feel more grateful All the for time. what God has given mm -hmm. me and of being a woman because mm -hmm. I have so many benefits that men don't have, you know. I mean, I can bear a child. I can mm -hmm. feel that child in mm -hmm. me. I can uh, feed that child. Mm -hmm. um, I can be everything to that child. Mm -hmm. The father is also. Mm -hmm. But the, the connection of that mother with that child is, no one can remove it, you know. And so I've been able to, uh, as a wife, uh, be more loving to my husband, uh, understanding to him. Uh, we're not only husband and wife, we're best friends. And um, 
of course, once my children came around, I wanted to have 12. <laughs> he didn't let me, though. <laughs> he, he said uh, that I was crazy because it would be too expensive later on. No. But the three that God has given us have been wonderful. I have a son, is my oldest, and then I have two girls. And I've been able to be strong and raise them uh, with my values mm -hmm. and make them very proud mm -hmm. of what we stand for. Uh, Islam has changed my life totally and it has made me so proud of myself that I've been able to love God so much and be pleasing to Him and everything I want to do is mm -hmm. to please Him. Mm -hmm. And I've transferred that to my children mm -hmm. and even my husband, I've taught him a few things, believe it or not, even oh, though he came love. from a Muslim country but and I did not. But you helped him. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's what marriage mm -hmm. is all about. Mm -hmm. You help each other mm -hmm. to bring out the best in each mm -hmm. other. And um, at work also, mm -hmm. you know, because I do work, mm -hmm. uh, I've always worked in corporate America mm -hmm. uh, and in real estate. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been challenging, mm -hmm. but I feel that people, once they meet me, mm -hmm. uh, the shock is when they see me. And then once we have two words with each other, uh, it, they feel like if we've known each other forever, you I'm, know, I'm because sure of the that, respect and the Yes, and the I'm kindness. sure you have answered a lot of questions yes. about Islam, that you've helped to, you know, dispel some of those oh, misconceptions definitely. that definitely. people have. Well, after 9-11, mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of Spanish people that were very biased towards mm -hmm. Muslims. Not many of them know mm -hmm. when they first see me that I am Spanish, mm -hmm. that I speak fluent Spanish. And uh, they have comments that sometimes does irritate me. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do is I count to 10 before I before you speak, before my Cuban temper comes out. Very good. <laughs> and I try to be kind to them mm -hmm. and, and ask them, you know, if you have questions, if you have doubts, please feel free to ask me. And we need to be open. Good. We need to be open to everyone that is mm -hmm. out there that has a question. And I also tell our viewers, mm -hmm. Any, any questions that you might have if you're not Muslim or if you are Muslim, Muslim. Mm -hmm. please feel free to ask. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why we have conversation. Mm -hmm. This is why God wants us to seek knowledge. And I think every meeting with everyone, you learn something mm -hmm. new. Yeah, we all have things to share. We all have things to share. Mm -hmm. And we can all grow together. <laughs> absolutely. You know? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Islam is something that it has been the most wonderful thing in my life. It's been like if I had a total blood change mm -hmm. in my system. Mm -hmm. And my way of life has become so simple to me, so easy to me, that I really don't even remember how my life was before, mm -hmm. and I don't desire it a bit. Mm -hmm. you know? So your life is different than it was before. Oh, yes, definitely. It's better. It's, you still feel connected. You feel more connected to God. Oh, more definitely. More connected to God. Oh, well, the connection is, mm -hmm. is every second of my life, yeah. because everything I do, I, I analyze to see if it's something that God would want me to do or not. And if it's wrong and I still want to do mm -hmm. it, I pray real hard for God to mm -hmm. take the, that desire away, you know, keep the devil away. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I've taught my children also. Mm -hmm. And they're very happy to be Muslim. They're very proud to mm -hmm. be Muslim. And they love everyone, you know, mm -hmm. and everyone that wants to know about Islam, they're more than open to speak about it. Mm. And, and not with the intention of conversion mm -hmm. or reversion, right. with the intention of just getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. The important thing is to know each yes. other and respect each other. Mm -hmm. That's what the Quran tells us. Yes. Yeah, and that's how, that's how we become a peaceful, loving mm -hmm. community. Yeah, we have to live together. Yeah. Have you read any good books that you that have helped you along the way? Anything you would recommend? Or? In Islam? Mm -hmm. No, I tend mm -hmm. to stick to my hadith yeah? okay. and my Quran. All right. Um, the books can mm -hmm. always be mm -hmm. the books can always be um, mm -hmm. misleading, mm -hmm. maybe because you don't know who, unless you know the author. Well, what do you think? But Al Hikmat, mm -hmm. you know, I I I tend to see the views of uh, Mulana Shafat. Mm -hmm. I love to mm -hmm. see his, uh, you know, his speeches, mm -hmm. his recordings, mm -hmm. his khutbahs. Mm -hmm. 
um, I read a lot mm -hmm. of what he writes mm -hmm. about. Um, mm -hmm. He helps me and he answers mm -hmm. a lot of my questions, oh, okay. and that's very important to me. Because maybe some people, you know, don't well, know we where don't, we're to. We're not all knowledgeable. Well, that's it, yes. you know, so yes. you need to, and, as and you're seeking knowledge. We must respect the people that mm -hmm. have taken the mm -hmm. step to learn more mm -hmm. and to have the experience mm -hmm. with more people than we have, mm -hmm. you know, and they can always guide us in the right path. Mm -hmm. Well, you've had a beautiful journey. Yeah, you oh, it's really been have, wonderful. and Thank you seem God. so happy. And and when you smile, your eyes are smiling. Yeah. Okay. Thank and you. I'm and and keep doing that because you can affect and touch so many people, Muslims and non-Muslims. And you. I think it's that's that's what we're supposed to do. It's you a know? wonderful life. Now we're getting ready to wrap up. Is there anything you know else in particular that you would like to tell our viewers? about, you know, the, the world, anything, what we should be doing, what we should work on. I know women, girls, our daughters, you have daughters, I have a daughter. I know that's real important to you. I think um, daughters should take, well, the biggest step in their mm -hmm. life is to be proud of being Muslims mm -hmm. and um, proud of being who they are and, and help their friends all become close to Islam mm -hmm. or, or learn the values that are within Islam mm -hmm. because they have to be able to be mothers later in their lives mm -hmm. and that's so important and um, be close to their friends uh, be there for them mm -hmm. you know be they Muslim or not mm -hmm. <coughs> it's something that's very um, important in Islam to, to support be, to support to listen yes. it's and not help only to each give other materially it's mm -hmm. to give spiritually and mm -hmm. emotionally mm -hmm. um, and girls have to be strong in their faith mm -hmm. you know be be proud of who you are love yourself and keep your self-respect mm -hmm. don't allow to lose that mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing mm -hmm. that the girls must remember mm -hmm. And sons also, you know, they have they they are going to be leaders of their homes mm -hmm. at, at one point. Fathers, husbands, fathers, husbands, leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can be bosses in their mm -hmm. own companies. Mm -hmm. uh, my son's studying medicine, mm -hmm. so he's going to have his own patients to mm -hmm. deal with. And with everyone that you come in contact mm -hmm. with, you're going to touch in some way, mm -hmm. you know, emotionally. Mm -hmm. And you have to be someone special that they'll always remember you. You don't have to be in the history books. Mm -hmm. You just have to touch people's hearts, and they'll always remember you. Oh, yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, You're welcome. Sister Aisha. It was wonderful talking with it's you. Been a thank pleasure. you for sharing your story with us, and uh, I hope you can come back again, and yeah. we can talk some more. I'd love it. Okay. You know, I, I, I know love we can to talk. talk. We're not done. We didn't get to finish, but we ran out of time. We'll be back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Salamu alaikum. صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم